Have you ever thought of what would happen to our planet if we kept producing plastic products in the manner and the quantity that we are producing them today? According to United Nations Environment Programme, about 300 million tons of plastic wastes are produced every year. Over the past decades, we have had huge outcry against how plastic products are being detrimental to our environment. Did you know that it takes almost 400 years for one plastic bottle to decompose? Plastic bags are made from crude, crude oil and are mostly used once, therefore makes room for high cost of production. They pollute our oceans, causing huge threats to our aquatic lives. Our atmosphere is hugely polluted whenever plastic products, uh, plastic products are burned. It is not good for us, for our health, it is not good for our wildlife, it is not good for the ecosystem, and ultimately, it is not good for our planet. In the past years, people have shown concern towards this issue. Some have even gone ahead to develop ideas, you know, which would provide solutions to this particular issue. These are all brilliant. But what if we had innovative idea which would help us clean up our environment, save our, our wildlife, improve our health, increase our comfort, and ultimately save our planet? Save our planet. On this episode of One on One with Chibweze, I sat down with one of the innovative minds to discuss innovation and entrepreneurship. Here we talked about innovative solutions to the issue of plastic waste. Join our conversation to find out how we can make our environment much cleaner and much more habitable. Today we want to talk about innovation and entrepreneurship and um, joining me on the show today is uh, Mr. Mfobi Ferdinand. Hi Mr. Mfobi, you're welcome on the show. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. So um, today uh, we are talking about innovation. Uh, how would you define the term innovation? To me, uh, innovation is uh, like simply improving the quality mm -hmm. and simplifying the process of uh, creating services and activities and and goods. Yeah. So recently, you you came up with the with the company Amoba. Amabo. Amabo. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. You came up with the company Amabo. Uh, what's Amabo all about? Well, uh, the definition of Amabo is simply African market and business opening. Mm -hmm. Coincidentally, if you read it from behind, it sounds. Obama. Uh, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is really good. Okay, so how did you come up with this? Uh, with the well, it's just as in the in the, my board members meeting, mm -hmm. we were trying to bring up a name which can fit our vision mm -hmm. because Amabo intends to be like a conglomerate in the future. Okay. So that way you can see we can if you read the definition, it says African. Uh, mm -hmm. so Business and mar uh, market, African and business. market and business opening. Yeah. Yes. So. Okay. Yes. So um, you you are into um, you know recycling and uh, producing um, roofing, uh, ties. roofing ties. You know with with plastic. You know waste plastic. How did you come up with this idea? You know because I mean the the issue of um, uh, waste and plastic is something that has been you know it has been receiving a huge outcry over the few over the years and um, you know people have been concerned and about how what's going to become of all this waste we've been having. So how did you come up with this idea? You know to recycle waste and, and use it for something as significant mm -hmm. as, as roofing tiles? Yes, actually, before I answer your question, yeah. I want to clarify. So we use sand and plastic. Okay. 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 For the idea, this idea was born out of necessity. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a local community where in school we were taught how to disperse waste. And the way we were taught was that we gather the dirt mm -hmm. or the, the, the plastic and all the other waste together and burn them. And all this was not good for the ozone layer. Mm. But for me at that time, I didn't know the impact or the ecological impact that this had on our ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. 
Bon, I had the privilege to have traveled a lot. Mm -hmm. And in the course of traveling, the ideas started coming in my, on my, in my mind, yeah. seeing the way other countries were treating their uh, waste. Yeah. And going to and fro to Cameroon, I saw that the problem of plastic was really becoming hazardous. It was becoming an, almost like an epidemic for my mm -hmm. community. Yeah. Yeah. So I came to Austria, and in the course of doing my research, I saw that Austria being one of the cleanest countries mm -hmm. in the world, mm -hmm. I asked, how do they do? Where do, how do they manage their waste? Then I did a lot of research and I found that there are a lot of ways that plastic could be recycled or be treated and not just treated to discard, but also produce something which can be, which you can give a second life. Yeah. Yeah. And then I thought of it, I said in Cameroon and in Africa generally, if you look the way houses are being roofed there, we use zinc, yeah. and if you look at it, most of the zinc roof, the, most of the houses are ro the roofs yeah, are rusty, rust, yeah. and people collect water from these rusty things, these rusty rusty roofs, mm -hmm. which is not very healthy, and most of the time they drink this water. But then, with the idea of Amabo, I thought this innovation could be more appreciated and more healthy using our 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 innovation to replace those roofs. That yeah. is why I decided, oh, let me start from the roof. Listening to my guests talk about how there are so many different products that could be made out of plastic waste, I was really interested and quite curious to know why he decided for roofing tires. And his response was mind blowing. Um, I, I know there could be other alternatives, you know, that you could have produced out of this plastic. Okay. And then you chose the roof. What other alternative do you think, you know, could could be made out of this plastic waste? Oh, okay. the, li have... the list the list is actually endless. Mm. But the thing is, you want to make a product which can make an impact mm. on the community. One. So we started with the roofs. Yeah. One. And when making with, with the roofs, yeah. we know we improve the health of the people mm -hmm. because if they change, imagine if they change all the houses from the rusty roofs. With, to a marble roofing tires, which ecologic, which is ecologically friendly, one you, you improve the people's health in yeah. this dimension because yeah. the rust that the people drink from the rusty roof water they collect yeah. is not healthy for mm -hmm. their system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And secondly, Cameroon has a coastal line of about four hundred kilometers, okay. starting from Campo in Equatorial Guinea, mm -hmm. right up to Abana in Nigeria. Yeah. And you know we're in the tropics, and we have very huge streams yeah. which empty their content into the Atlantic Ocean. Mm, yeah. And if you take into consideration that Cameroon produces, from the statistics of 2018, 600,000 tons of plastic, which means by 2020, the number should have yeah, yeah, uh, uh, risen up to about uh, maybe 800 to 900,000 tons of plastic. Let's consider that 400,000 of those, 400,000 tons of those plastic end up on our land fields. So the rest of it empties itself into the rivers and down into yeah. the Atlantic Ocean. Mm -hmm. And just imagine, we have aquatic life in the land, mm -hmm. in, the, in the oceans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can see that there's a cycle. The aquatic life consumes the plastic, the humans consume the aquatic life, and it's a chain. So just the fact that we are going to break this chain yeah. okay. is really a big impact. Mm -hmm. Also, the, the impact that Amabo is making in the communities around this, in, around, the, around, around this factory, and not only around this factory, also beyond our borders, mm. is just massive. Mm. Great, great, great. You know, based, based on what I saw on, on, on the newspaper, you know, regarding Amabo, it says that Amabo already has about 30 employees, you know. So also, I think this is something that is also very important, you know, creating job opportunities for, for young people, you know, in Africa. Um, what, what would you say about this? Yes. When you talk of 30 employees, those are 30 direct employees. Mm. And if you look at the average African family, of let's say five to seven. Yeah. If you multiply five by 30, that's 150. 
people who are directly depending on the Amabu. And not just the employment aspect. It's a lot of awareness. We create a lot of awareness mm -hmm. in schools and in our community about the negative effect or impact of discarding waste plastic on the streets or on the on the landfills, yeah. which as I said earlier, end up on the in our in the, in the ocean, Atlantic yeah. Ocean or in our rivers that cause a lot of flooding, cause a lot of uh, landslide, and in fact, the negative effect is just too much. Mm -hmm. Plastic, as you know, can take up to 100 years for it to break down or it decompose for it to decompose. So it also helps to retard the, 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 the quality of the soil to regenerate itself. So in this case, if we clear our landfills of just the fact that Amabo, let me, let me bring up a point, Amabo consumes at our, at our present capacity, 40 to 50 tons of plastic a month at full capacity. So you can imagine that if every month we use, we can, we can clear the streets of 40 to 50 tons of plastic, I believe in the next five to 10 years, our streets will be completely free from plastic, uh, from plastic waste. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So On the business aspect of our conversation, he shared with me the inspiring story of his partnership deal, which runs across the shores of Africa. He further highlighted the markets which should be expecting their products. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, yeah, it, it's it's actually also very very impressive, you know, seeing the fact that um, Amabo is is in is in. Um, uh, partnership with the, Aust the the Austrian Development Agency. Yeah, the this is a question that that I I I find very important, you know, uh, because it's it could also it's not just for here, but probably it could inspire a lot of other persons. How did you come up with you know being able to convince the Austrian Development Agency, you know, to come in this partnership with them? Yes, I I know most people have the impression that uh, in Austria being somebody from another country it is difficult to make an impact or to make some breakthroughs here but I, I don't believe in that for me I believe if I want to do something I go for it if you fail you try and try fortunately the project of Amabo fell in alignment with the objectives of the other which is to help uh, innovations and bring up help uh, other uh, development in other countries out of Europe. Yeah. When I, we presented our project to uh, ADA, they were very contented with it because they saw that uh, the advantages of it were in alignment yeah. with their pro with yeah. their policies. Yeah. So, if I might ask you, did you go through any hurdles? You know, try to to get this. When what, what, what hurdles? Like what kind of <laughs> obstacles? Yes, obviously, when you talk of hurdles. My hurdle was just time. Okay. Yeah, because if you look at the administration of Amabo, it comprises people of different walks of life. Yeah. People who have the same vision. So when we present, when we presented our project to the Austrian mm -hmm. Development Agency, they saw the composition of our team. Mm -hmm. They made field trips to Cameroon to actually do some feasibility studies themselves. Yeah. And this, they themselves, they had a first-hand experience of the challenges that we have in Cameroon yeah. regarding the, where the waste plastics on our streets and on our waterways. Mm. That is why I think that uh, they uh, approved of our project. Yeah. Now, the, 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 this is, you, you say that you, you're the, the roofing tiles, right, yes. uh, that, that is made out of this plastic is both with sand and, and, and plastic, right? Exactly. So when we talk about the competitive um, strength of, of these tires, you know, in the market, you know, because like in Africa, most of us, most of the African countries depend on countries like China, for example, you know, for, mm -hmm. for their roofing roofing material. So how how reliable and, and sustainable are these um, roofing tires that Amabo produces? Yes, uh, based on our metrics, when we're doing our feasibility studies, mm -hmm. We realize that we realize that the consumer pattern in Cameroon is changing, mm. it's innovating. People are now buying a lot of products that has to deal with plastic, maybe other plastic packaging and all that. Yeah, yeah. So one for sustainability of the project, the 
consumption or the number the quantity of plastic waste in Cameroon is increasing mm -hmm. every year. So as far as the purchasing power of the people are, is rising, so is also the, con the, 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 the consumption of plastic, uh, plastic or the, the purchasing of plastic products also, yeah. which most of them end up still on our street. Yeah. So for that, we, we made our feasibility studies and found out that the, 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 there will be always be an increase in the quantity of plastic that will be deposited on our streets or on the yeah. on our waterway. The the the, the strength, the, the durability of, of the roofing tiles that the are being produced, tiles. yeah. You know, how is it going to be able to stand sunshine and you know that people are going to be able to rely on on the on the roofing tiles that, that Amabo produces, you know, exactly. to enable in, in order to compete strongly in the market. Ex exactly. Uh, Obviously, we did our during our feasibility studies. We did a lot of tests also, on okay, okay. which we our our products even certified. Yeah. So, and most of the customers who have come to have a first-hand experience of our yes. product, yes. they are very appreciative of the product. Okay. One of the quality of the product is that one, it's unbreakable. Okay. It regulates the temperature. You can know you, you see like the temperature in our an average temperature in, in our yeah, tropics okay, is yeah. about. Uh, 30 to 45 exactly, degrees. Exactly. But with our marble, when you roof your house with a marble tire, with a marble tires, yeah. you don't need an air condition because the, the materials we use and the coating we put on, on we apply on it reacts against the UV light of uh, the, the, the UV light of the sun. Mm. So during the day, your house is, has a stable temperature which doesn't go to up to a certain yeah. uh, which doesn't fluctuate. Yeah. So, and then for the consumer pattern also, you know. In Cameroon or in Africa generally, we have the trend of always trying to venture into new product, especially with the disapp disappointment that yeah. our people have gotten sure. with the zinc roof. Yeah. Because with the zinc, if you look at the market today, look at the houses, 90, 95% of the houses, not only in Cameroon, in around Africa as a whole, you see that they, will be, they are roofed with zinc. Yeah. And after five or three years, you see those roofs become very rusty. You invest something to say maybe about fifty to sixty thousand euros or, or on your small duplex, and in the couple of years, the first part of it that start getting way out yeah. is the roof. So it's very discouraging. Mm -hmm. And when you look at your neighbor who took the risk to venture into a, an innovative product like a marble, yeah. and you see that the same house you put roof almost at the same time, his is still very bright, mm -hmm. still very clear, and mm -hmm. still very more beautiful. Yeah. You see, you have the tendency also to navigate towards mm -hmm. that direction of a marble tire. Awesome. Yeah, so you know, um, uh, so in what, in what market do you intend to, you know, extend your, your, your um, customer base? Yeah, customer base. You know, is it just like Cameroon alone or other parts of Africa or probably Europe, you know? Yeah, uh, a marble, we started in this local community. Yeah. It's just like a spring box, okay. you know? And if you look at the initial objective of Amabo, is to one to create awareness, mm -hmm. to create employment in com local communities and in Africa as a whole. Mm -hmm. but right now, we started in uh, in Likoki yeah. or in a uh, yes in Cameroon. Already, we have calls from Chad. We did even a delivery in Chad last week. Okay. We have calls from Central African Republic. We have calls from Congo. We have a delivery which we are going to do in Ghana. Mm. We have a delivery which we are going to do in Hawaii, in the United States, because there they also have the tropics. And they've come to realize that Amabo's product, Rufi Premium Ties, is the best quality product you can use in any tropical region. Mm. This is I, 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 absolutely a great news, you know. You know that it has actually gotten up to 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 Hawaii. Then that's that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. And so um. Now, how do people get in contact with, with Amabo, you know, like, you know, being able to, to reach them and, and contact them? Yes, with social media today, and uh, it's very easy to get through to us. Okay. You can you can go on, you know, on Facebook, on mm. Google. Okay. You can find us, we have a website. Which, so what, 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 what's it called on, on those platforms? Yes, you have Amabo, uh, we call it, the French acronym is uh, Amabo T, Cameroon. Okay. Okay, or Amabo Premium Tires, you will okay. find it, yes, Cameroonese. Okay. I was as well delighted to know how my guest managed the business, running his business and his family, which obviously lived uh, were in 
two separate locations. You know, his business is in, in Africa, in Cameroon, in Africa, and his family is in Austria and Europe. And it was so inspiring anyways to, to you know, get this information because I feel like um, a lot of people, especially, especially young entrepreneurs, could actually learn a lot from this. And maybe you might also be having this kind of difficulty and you know you don't know how to handle it. This history might also inspire you, you know. Just take a listen and um, yeah, I hope you find something that would work for you from his story as well. Awesome. Now, um, you, are, you are a family man. Yes. And um, whose family base bases in, in Austria. Exactly. And the company is also based in, in Cameroon. How do you navigate this? You know, how do you manage um, family with business? You know, um, you know, to put everything, make sure that everything is, is in perspective. Yes, I know we living in the Western world, your bringing of the family here is not very easy. But you know, the way you structure your family from the first, from the, from, from the initial state, yeah. and if you have a, a wife who is understandable to yeah. you, it is very easy. And for me, I think my strength is my wife. Okay. And my children also, they are all bringing, and their religious all bringing also, which are impacted in them as a very young, has played a very great role mm. for them to continue in the same path that I initiated mm. in them yeah, when they were very young. You, you mentioned something about religion. I, I believe you are a, a believer. Oh yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Christian and I'm very prayerful. Mm. And that is what I believe. These are doors that God is opening to me, really, to be very honest with you. Mm. And my family, all of us, my children also, um, in spite of my absence, yeah. they are really walking the same path that I initiated. Yeah. Yes. This is this is really great to to hear. This is really awesome to to hear. Um, so, how what would you say to? I, I believe that there are some um, African in innovative minds here in Austria, in Europe at large, who are. Uh, you know, who also have things that they would want to come up with, but maybe because of the resources or because of the, the channel, you know, through with which they can bring this to life, mm -hmm. it's a huge challenge to them. So how could you encourage them and what would you say to them, you know, to, to encourage and strengthen them? Yes. Uh, if you interview maybe say 99% of Africans here, they always they always have dreams back in Africa. Mm. But the problem is to make that move. Exactly. And sometimes they make the move in the wrong sectors. Or they want to go into adventure in Africa, but they are going in with a lot of fear or doubt in their mind. Mm -hmm. One. The first thing for me is that I always tell people that please, we've we've come to Europe. Maybe to look for a better life. Yeah. But sometimes we might never get the money or the millions of euros that we dream in Europe. You can learn something new from Europe. You can learn an idea from Europe and take it back home and put it into plastic practice. Mm -hmm. It is very easy to start something small in Europe, in, in Africa yeah. than here. So the first thing is this. Try to always be in contact with your people back at home. Okay. And do a lot of research, there are a lot of opportunities in Europe, a lot. It's very easy. When we were growing up, there were no internet, there were no... In fact, we only rely on information from all newspapers. That's right. But today you have everything, you have smartphones, you have laptops, the world and everything is yeah. in, the, in these phones. Go into them, make your research and make contacts. In Europe, Europe is, has already, was already built long ago. Yeah. Yeah. All what they're doing now is uh, innovation. And which some of even some of the old technology which the Europeans are innovating are still very new for us. Mm. So there is still a lot to be exploited. And don't always feel that you, sh you shouldn't always feel, oh, maybe it will not, maybe they will not. No. Go. Cool. You have a lot of organizations here which are also willing to help, but they don't also know whom on how to channel their help to Africa. But if you come up with a sustainable project which you yourself, you believe in it, and you are willing to take the risk to go down and confront this project, I believe that you will find somebody along the line here in Europe who is going to assist you in one way or another mm. to make sure that your dream comes true. Mm. 
Those are great words. Thank you so much, Mr. Mfobi. Um, I really appreciate you for joining me on the show today. Um, so <clears throat> viewers, you, you already heard it. Um, take the step, take that bold step and um, do just make the move. You don't have to gather all the millions. You know, you don't have to uh, have everything figured out. Just make sure you, you've done your background, your background research and then make the first move. Once you make the first move, yeah, everyone is prone to failing. Everyone is prone to, prone to falling at some point. But the most important thing is that we learn from our mistakes. You know, that we don't stay on the ground even when uh, we fall. We don't, we don't let our, our, our setbacks, you know, to keep us back. You know, so just make the first move to do your research properly, make take the first step, and then you will definitely uh, see yourself there. We have great innovative minds among amongst us Africans, amongst us uh, uh, amongst uh, African community within the African community all over the world. We have great things to 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 do in order to put Africa on the on the map again. Just do it. You know, take that step. These are great words from Mr. Amphobi, um, the CEO of Amabo. No, Thank general you. manager. General manager of Amabo. Thank you so much once again, Mr. Amphobi. I really appreciate you, you know, for joining me on the show today. Um, this is uh, still one-on-one with Chiweza on King City TV. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Thank you.